All right, everybody. So here's the 1995 Mustang that I bought back in 2012. Uh, this was a decent car, a 302 automatic car. It was in fair shape. I just got some pictures of it here so I could show it to you. Uh, here is a picture of it after it was cleaned up a little bit and I got a different set of wheels on it. Um, it was a decent car and I really wanted to do a build with it. Uh, but there was a lot of problems with it. The car was all over the road. You could hardly drive it. Uh, here's a picture of the new brakes that I put on the car. First thing I had to do, uh, just bought some stuff off of Rock Auto and uh, spent the day doing the front brakes. The front end was really messed up. Here I mounted the front wheel and I uh, was sort of doing a backyard way of checking the camber on the car and it was way out. Uh, I did a few things to try to correct that here. I'm putting in some urethane bushings on the strut towers there just to sipping things up. Um, every little thing that I did with the suspension with this car helped. Uh, and that was um, a major improvement amongst other things I did. Uh, next, these projector headlamps that the original owner had on the car, uh, you could not see at night. The lights were not bright enough. Uh, so I went out and I got a set of uh, Cobra, brand new Cobra lenses and side marker lights for the car. Big improvement. The stock wheels were cracked. Here's a picture of them. They wouldn't, the tires wouldn't hold air. I went out and got these bullet wheels, but they were, were an, F, an S197. They didn't really fit quite right, uh, but I needed to put some spacers and they were okay. Uh, I then went out and got a set of Takiko, Takiko Blues for it. I put them in. And also I installed a set of Mach 1 springs from a 2004 Mach 1. Uh, here, here you can see the difference uh, between the stock spring and the Mach 1 spring for the front. Uh, there they are installed in the car with the brakes and things were starting to look good. Uh, the car was starting to drive better and um, the stock engine was tired and I needed to get it out. And I really wanted to put a big 408 in it. And I found this on Craigslist. Here it is. 392 stroke motor, uh, A392 engine. Uh, I got it from a guy off of Craigslist. And um, here's the uh, heads that were still in the box. A uh, guy with, from Craigslist uh, was selling the engine. He had a Cobra build you know, like a, um, a Shelby Cobra, AC Cobra, Superformance, I think it was. He wanted to put this 392 in the Cobra, uh, but then things started to change for him and he decided to sell a motor. Um, I really wanted to put this motor in the car. You could see it's uh, just about four inches in stroke. The motor was brand new, never taken out of the box. Uh, here are some pictures that I have of it on the engine stand. Uh, all of my friends were shocked that I picked this thing up. Uh, I got it for about 1500 bucks. It was a steal. And um, here again, uh, I just took a lot of pictures of this engine because it was really something that was really unbelievable that I got this kind of a deal on this engine. Uh, here's a picture of one of the heads still in the box, still in the plastic. Uh, I put them up on the bench and, and took a bunch of pictures of them. These were X heads. Um, they were not really that good a head for the day when I bought this package. Uh, AFR heads were out. There was a lot better heads out. Um, I started to collect the parts that I needed to get the car and the, the engine in the car. Here's a, uh, an intake manifold, 351 uh, style EFI intake manifold. I think it was a pro comp or something like that. Uh, I picked that up cheap on Craigslist. Uh, here's a picture of the elbow that you needed with a 70 millimeter throttle body. And uh, I also went out and got these shorty headers uh, for a Fox body that would fit that car. Uh, here's a distributor from a, a late Ford van with a steel gear on it that would work uh, with the, uh, e uh, the, e uh, the ECU. Uh, Melling oil pump, 351. Here's a picture of the oil pump. Um, just getting everything together that I needed. Uh, here's a set of 30-pound injectors uh, that I had picked up that uh, probably would have been good enough to run that engine. I really wasn't going to cam it that much. And the car was really starting to come together. You could see uh, it's a pretty nice looking car. Uh, like I say, 302 with an automatic. You didn't really see them all that much, you know? And uh, so I was really hot to build this car and put, put that big motor in it. Um, but I was also eyeballing some other things because at the time, this was 2012 when I was doing this. And these are the kinds of cars that were coming out. Look at this 2012 Mustang, Coyote Power. You know, so part of me really wanted to do the push rod thing, but the coyotes were in the back of my mind. So as I was putting the parts together to put this 95 together, I changed course and I decided not to do the, the 392. 
and I bought this, a GT40P motor out of a 2001 um, Mercury Mountaineer. Very low mileage engine. Uh, here's some pictures of it. This car was sitting, in, this engine was sitting in the junkyard for many years. Uh, and finally, um, I was able to pick this engine up for 500 bucks. This engine had something like 2,000 miles on it. Um, it was a great candidate uh, for this 95 Mustang. So I have all of these pictures here that I'm going to show you what the engine looked like as I was tearing it down. Uh, you can see the GT40P intake manifold on it. Uh, I was going to use that in the Mustang, right? You can see uh, the lower manifold uh, with the port spacing. And uh, it, was a, it was a very low mileage, clean engine. It just had been sitting in the junkyard for a very long time. There you can see the, uh, the four bars on the heads. Uh, showing that they're GT40P heads. You know, these P motors, uh, really, it's too bad that they didn't come out earlier and uh, ended up, you know, possibly ended up in the Mustangs. They, they never did. Uh, they were more powerful than, than the uh, E7TE heads that were on the Mustang GTs at the time. Uh, but you can see here the engine's clean. Uh, you know, you can see the bottom end. It was perfectly clean. And uh, as I tore it down uh, to the short block, you could see uh, this was a good candidate to put in the car. And uh, so I wanted to change a few things, right? So here, here's what the uh, Valley D engine looks like. And you can see what one of the things that makes this different. You see there's no dog bones. Um, the hold down brackets usually go to dog bones. This P motor just had these plastic pieces in there. You can see them there. Uh, there's a good shot of it right there. You can see that it doesn't have the regular dog bones. It's just got these plastic pieces. Uh, here's the uh, valve spring remover that I got from Harbor Freight. And I proceeded to change the valve springs. Here I am pulling the first ones. Uh, here's the valve spring kit that I got. They were dropping valve springs with the retainers, you know, and, uh, and everything that you need to change the valve springs, seals and everything. And um, there's a better picture of everything there. Uh, these were the, the springs that I needed for the cam I wanted to use. There you can see I put the checking springs on there because you need to check every single one uh, before you proceeded to change the springs. And it was very specific. You had to be careful not to mix up the intake springs with the exhaust springs and the retainers because they were different. And here you can see I'm checking them, I'm pulling them. Uh, you'll notice in some of these pictures that there's a, a fuel line sticking in the um, spark plug hole. There it is right there. I would run that fuel line in there and pull that cylinder up the top dead center and pull the spring. And, uh, you know, that would stop the spring from dropping in the uh, cylinder. There it is right there. And there's the new seals. So uh, it was a fun build. I had a good time there. There I'm putting the new um, seals on the valves. And uh, one by one, you can see I put some tape on the valve to stop it from dropping into the cylinder as I went to the next cylinder. Uh, that spring remover didn't work very well. I had to actually zip tie it on there so it would hold and I could pull them off. But there they are, uh, tape holding, holding the valves up, got all the springs off. And uh, I was ready to um, put the valve springs on. But before I did that, I had to put the cam in. And here's the cam, uh, XE274 cam. Um, it was a decent cam for the engine. I didn't want to over cam it. I wanted to make high torque with this cam. And uh, this cam did deliver. It, uh, it, it made some good power in this combination. So uh, here is the cam going in the motor. Um, you know, the, uh, the lifters were lifted up, added away, and we slid the cam into the motor. She went in very easily. Uh, here's a picture of the cam in with the, um, the timing chain on. This is the timing chain that came out of the engine. Uh, did not have very much slack in the chain. It looked perfect, so I put it on. Uh, here's the tool that I bought to check the valve spring height. All right, and there, there we begin um, putting the valve springs in. A couple pictures of the checking springs. Uh, I made myself a little gauge right there so that I can go from one to the other. And one by one, we installed the, uh, the drop-in valve springs on each valve. Uh, put the fuel line in the cylinder, brought it up to top dead center on each one, and installed the springs uh, from one cylinder to the next until they were all done. And here, uh, you can could, you could see them. I took a lot of pictures because uh, that's what I did back then. Didn't do a lot of video back then. It was all about pictures. I really wasn't on YouTube. I wasn't doing anything like this. Uh, but uh, there's me as a bricklayer using my level to check the spring heights across the cylinder, you know, across all the um, all the valves, and they all checked out pretty good. Very very little variance. 
we moved over to the next cylinder bank. We did the same thing. Uh, one by one, we changed all the valve springs. It worked out very well, actually. Uh, we're putting the fuel line in there and holding, holding the valves up. We went and changed every uh, valve spring. So the drop-in valve springs were made for the cam, uh, the right pressures, the, you know, the right uh, height. Everything worked out pretty good. And I got the dog bones that I needed. I didn't use those uh, plastic pieces. I went and got some dog bones from a friend. And um, it uh, started to take shape as a hybrid engine, as I call it. There you can see the dog bones. And uh, it was a nice little package, uh, not the 392 that I wanted to put in. But uh, it was fun. I had a good time the year that I did this. This was back in late 2012 when I actually did this build. So a little 302. And... Um, we proceeded to pull the old engine out of the car. There's a picture of the old motor coming out. There's another blurry picture that uh, that I took. Didn't get a lot of pictures of this. It's a frustrating thing. There you could see earlier with this car, I changed the transmission, and it had a converter, a 2800 stall converter uh, with a rebuilt transmission. And that made it pretty good with, uh, with the GT40P motor that I put in uh, a little later on. Uh, here's a picture of the motor getting out. What a relief that was to get that motor out of there. Uh, there was like 200,000 miles on this motor. Uh, wasn't really very dirty, uh, but it was tired. It was a tired old motor. It was good to get it out of the car. And there it is laying on the ground. And You know, it was just good to get past this part of the build and uh, move on to some new things. Now, here are some of the parts I bought for the new motor. These are GT40P headers specifically made for the SN95 with the 302. Uh, you can see the riser for the EGR tube in that header right there. Uh, there's a rare picture of me putting some things together. I think I'm putting the oil pump in the motor at that point. And uh, there it is. I got the oil pump on and um, we're proceeding to put this, to put the parts from the other motor on. There's the pickup coming out of the GT motor going on the P motor. Took some time to clean that uh, oil pan, but we got that on there too. And uh, there's a couple of shots of what it looked like as the new motor started to take shape. It was a lot of fun. I got to say, I really enjoyed doing this. Um, here's a look at the front of the motor now. And uh, the cam is in. And uh, we're just uh, getting ready to put the intake manifold on there. I am getting ready to set the lower manifold on it. Just a few pictures of it from a few different angles. Like I say, you can see the dog bones. And there's another shot of what the... Um, gaskets look like on the intake ports lower manifold on timing chain on timing chain cover on oil pump uh, oil excuse me water pump on right um, stock valve covers went on everything's starting to take shape and look pretty good uh, here's a good view of the gt40p headers i mocked them up for clearance to make sure nothing interfered but there was interference right there the header was hitting the block so i had to clearance that out Right, and then here's a picture of the header uh, with the EGR um, passage tube there, or hook up for the tube. Um, there's the harmonic balancer and the you know the timing pointer, every little detail I took pictures of. Here's a picture of the EGR riser tube hooked up, and it went on perfectly. The location of that port on the headers was perfect. Uh, these were Mac headers, I believe, and uh, they worked excellent. You know, I wasn't trying to make a ton of power with this thing, so the shorty headers worked. Uh, they hooked right up to my um, my uh, uh, off-road pipe that I had on the car. Here's a picture of the engine installed in the car. Here's another picture of it. I don't have any video of this except for this one little clip of what it was like for this engine to run. So check it out. Listen to it right here. As it turned out, guys, the build worked out perfectly. Uh, a guy named Willie from Dirty Dirty Racing actually did the tuning for me, and uh, he was able to email me some tunes, and I could burn my SCT chip, and we got the car really uh, running good. I remember back then I used to race Gen 5 Camaros on the street. Uh, a lot of the guys that had the Camaros didn't even know what this car was, and I couldn't actually beat those Camaros, uh, but I could hang with them, and I had some fun. I really did have a lot of fun with this car. 
But all the time, I was eyeballing cars like this. This 2012 Mustang GT, uh, this is when the Coyotes were really taking hold, and I ended up actually buying that car. There you can see it only had 7,200 miles on it. Super low mileage Coyote car, uh, premium with a stone interior. Uh, it was an automatic car. I think this car was owned by a girl, you know, uh, was well taken care of. I got a good deal on it. It cost me about 2,500 bucks. There you can see on the driveway with my 95. The 95 became a daily driver. Uh, slowly, I started to give up on the idea of playing around with the old pushrod motors, and I started to think Coyote. Uh, so I drove the 95 around for a year or so and um, kept this um, 2012 in the garage, right? And uh, it was a beautiful car. Uh, here's a picture of the motor. It had the strut tower brace. Uh, the car had the 19-inch uh, the wheels, I believe they were at the time. A little bit of an upgrade for the car, and it was beautiful, and I really loved this uh, 2012. There you can see the picture still had the stripe on it. There I took the stripe off. Um, most of the cars came at the time with the stripe to lead. But uh, this was a beautiful 2012. I had a lot of fun with it. Uh, there's a picture of it next to the Mustang. I enjoyed owning those cars uh, at that time. But uh, then there came a point where I got rid of the 95 and uh, had the 2012. So, uh, you know, this was an experience uh, that was a transition time for me. Uh, here's the engine running in the 95. She ran good and she was powerful. Lots of torque, really moved the car and with the 2800 converter. Uh, this thing really took off off the line. Uh, surprised a lot of people, even me, considering what it was because I really didn't put much into it. Uh, that engine, I didn't even pull the heads off. I just changed the cam and the valve springs. Uh, the GT stuff on it and you know uh, had it tuned and, and she ran good but uh, so that's the story guys uh, this is something I did back in 2012 I had a lot of fun uh, back then I wasn't on YouTube and uh, since then uh, a lot of things have changed but uh, nowadays we don't play around with push rod motors anymore now it's all about coyotes so that's the story guys uh, this is basically uh, marks the end of my interest in building push rod motors uh, the Coyotes basically took over at this point. I really enjoyed that 95, uh, but that's it. Uh, I'm not likely to be building a pushrod motor ever again. And um, I'm pretty much done with the old cars. Uh, a lot has happened since I owned that 2012. I didn't have it very long. And uh, I had another 2012 after that that was much nicer than that one. But anyway, thanks for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed the video. We'll catch you in the next one. Take care.